Hey guys, welcome back to the Dark Tube. And today, as persons requested, I'm going to do more in-depth indices questions, including indices equations. So, before we get started, don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend that every Tuesday and Thursday there is a new math video posted. You can comment in the section and let me know what topics you guys want to see. All right, so we can get started. So let's say we have this. 3a to the 5 times 4a squared all over 2a cubed. So we could rearrange it like this. So what we would do first is we'd work the multiplication aspect first. So again, we'd multiply the coefficient. So it's 3 times 4, which gives you 12. And when you are multiplying with the same basis, you add the powers. So you're multiplying the a's, you're adding the powers. So it's 5 plus 2, which gives you 7. And then we're dividing by 2 a cube. Now, when we're dividing the coefficient, so it's 12 divided by 2, that gives you 6. And when we're dividing the same basis, we subtract the powers. So it's to the 4. And that's your final answer. Again, we could rearrange this by saying, Now we can work this aspect first, so we're multiplying the same basis, so we add the powers. So it's 5 to the 7 divided by 5 to the 6. Now that we're dividing the same basis, we subtract the powers. So it's 5, 7 minus 6 is 1, so the answer is 5. So if we have this fraction here raised to a power, what this is saying is that this power on the outside is to be multiplied by each power on the inside. So if you don't see a power, that means there's a 1 in the power. So for example, the 3 has a power of 1, the 5 has a power of 1, and the z has a power of 1. So what you're saying is 3 to the 1 times 3, x to the 3 times 3, y to the 2 times 3, all over 5 to the 1 times 3, and z to the 1 times 3. So now we're simplifying, so it's 1 times 3, so it's 3 to the 3, x to the 3, 3 is 9, y to the 2, 3 is 6, 5 to the 1 times 3, 5 to the 3, and z to the 3 as well. Now we can simplify these numbers here. So 3 cubed gives you 27. So 3 cubed gives you 27 x to the 9, y6, 5 cubed gives you 125, z cubed, and that's your final, and that's your final answer. Again, just like we did a while ago, if you don't see a power, there's a 1 there. So the 4 has a power of 1, 3 has a power of 1, and c has a power of 1. So it's 4 to the 1 times 2, a to the 2 times 2, b to the 3 times 2, all over 3 to the 1 times 2, c to the 1 times 2. 1 times 2 gives you 2, so you have 4 squared, a to the 4, b to the 6, all over 3 squared, c squared. Again, we can simplify the numbers, so 4 squared gives you 16, so you have a to the 4, b to the 6, and c squared gives you 9, so we have 9c squared. And that's the final answer. So let's say we have a question like this. 81 raised to the quarter times 49 raised to the half. And we want to solve this without using a calculator. What we want to try and do is get rid of the power. What you do is you look in the denominator of the, fr the fractional power, and you realize here that it is a 4. So you think, what number can I raise to the fourth power to give me 81? And you think and you say, 3 to the fourth power gives you 81. So you say 3 to the 4, and you write back the quarter on the outside. You go and you do the same thing for 49. You look at the denominator in the power, you realize it's a 2. What raised to the second power will give me 49? You will think and you say, oh, 7 to the 2 gives me 49. So you have 7 to the 2 and you have the half outside. 
Now, we know that when we have the, frac the powers like this, we are multiplying them together. So, 4, so rough work, 4 times a quarter, that would give you 1. So, this is three, saying 3 to the 1 times 2, so what is 2 times a half, that also gives you 1. So, these cancel. So, what you have is 3 to the 1 times 7 to the 1, which is saying 3 times 7, which is 21. So let's try another one. Let's say we have 25 to the half times 64 to the negative of third. Again, we look to the denominator for the power and realize that it's a 2 for the first one. So what raised to the second power gives you 25. And you think and you say 5 squared gives you 25. So you have 5 squared there and you write by the half on the outside times you look in the denominator of the power, you add the 3. What to the third power gives you 64? So 4 cubed gives you 64, and you have negative a third on the outside. Now, again, the 2's would cancel, so you have 5 to the 1, which is 5. The 3's would cancel, and you'd have left a minus 1. So it's saying f times 4 to the minus 1. And how would we change this to a positive? index, we have 5 times 1 over 4. And 5 times 1 over 4 gives you 5 over 4, which is the same thing as 1 and a quarter. Okay, so let's say we have this question here. What raised to the second power gives you 625? You'd think and you'd get 25. So 25 squared, and then you have negative a half on the outside, times we look to the denominator of the power, we see that it's a 2. What raised to the 2 power gives you 49. So it's 7 squared, and you have the half outside. Again, the 2 would cancel, so you'd have 25 to the minus 1 times 2 cancel, so it's 7. Again, to get that, the 25 to the minus 1 as a positive, we say 1 over 25 times 7 which is saying 7 over 25. Let's say we have square, square root 49 times cube root 125. This symbol here means the 49 is being raised to the half power times this here means 125 is being raised so again, we look now and we say the denominator and the power is 2, so what raised to the second power gives you 49. So it's 7 squared, then we have the half outside, just like we were doing before, times what raised to the third power gives you 125. 5 cubed to the 1 third. And again, the 2's would cancel, the 3's would cancel, and you have 7 times 5, which is 35. Okay, so now we're going to do indices equations. So for indices equation, what happens is that you have a unknown in the power. So for example, we have 64 to the x is equal to 16, and you're trying to solve for the unknown. So what you're going to do is think of the smallest base you can convert both of these two so that they can be the same. So if you think you're going to think of the number 2, so 2 to what power gives you 64? 6. Then you have the x outside. 2 to what power gives you 16? 2 to the 4. So now that the bases are the same, what we can do is equate the powers. So that means we have 6 times x, which gives you 6x, is equal to 4. And now you want to solve for x. So you have 6x is equal to 4. You want to solve for x, so you leave an x there, and you're dividing both sides by 6. 6 is cancel, so x is equal to 4 over 6. Then you look to see if you can simplify this any further, which gives you x is equal to 2 over 3.
let's say we have 2 to the 5x is equal to 10,024. Now we look to see what the smallest base is here. The smallest base is 2. So that means we're leaving the 2 to the 5x alone and we're converting 1024 to base 2. So 2 to the 10th power gives you 1024. So now that the bases are the same, we're equating the powers. So now we have 5x is equal to 10, and you want to make x the subject of the formula, so you're dividing both sides by 5. So that means x is equal to 2. Let's say we have 7 to the 3x is equal to 2401. Here, the lowest base is 7, so that means we're converting the 2401 to be 7. So 7 to the 4th power gives you 2401. So now that the bases are the same, we're equating the powers. So now we have 3x is equal to 4, and we want to make x the subject of the formula, so we're dividing both sides by 3. That means x is equal to 4 over 3, or 1 and a third. So let's try a more complex one. So let's say we have 625 to the p minus 2 is equal to 5 to the 1 plus p. Again, the lowest base we have here is 5, so that means we're converting 625 to base 5. So we have 5 to the 4th power, that gives us 625, and then we have the p minus 2 on the outside of the bracket, and we're leaving the 5 to the 1 plus p here. Now, the bases are the same, so we're going to be multiplying these together, and we're going to be equating the powers. So we have 4 times p minus 2 is equal to 1 plus p. Now we're going to distribute the 4 with everything inside the bracket. So we have 4p minus 8 is equal to 1 plus p. And now we're going to group our like terms. So we have 4p minus p is equal to 1 plus 8. 4p minus p is 3p, 1 plus 8 is 9, and we want to make p the subject, so we're dividing both sides by 3. So p is equal to 3. So let's say we have this question here. First, we look to see what the lowest base is, which is 5. So that means we're converting everything in terms of 5 for the base. So, leaving the 5 to the x, multiplied by 5 squared gives you 25, but then you have the 2x plus 1 on the outside, equal to 5 to the 4th power gives you 625. So now we need to multiply these here to simplify that bracket. So we have 5 to the x. 5 to the 4x plus 2 is equal to 5 to the 4. Now remember, when you're multiplying at the same base, you add the powers. So what you're doing is x for the 5 here plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 4. Because when you're multiplying, you're adding the powers. So now we can equate. So grouping like terms, so here we have x plus 4x, which gives us 5x. And 4 minus 2, which gives us 2. So 5x is equal to 2. And we want x to be the subject, so we're dividing both sides by 5. So x is equal to 2 over 5. Okay, so let's try this question here. So we realize that the lowest base here is 4. However, we cannot write 4 to any power to give us 8. So then we have to think of the lowest base that is common between 4, 8, and 64, which is 2. So 2 squared gives you 4. And then you have the x here on the outside. 
then you have 2 cube for 8 and you have 2x plus 1 on the outside then you have 2 to the 6th power gives you 64 so now we're going to simplify the powers so 2 times x that gives you 2x and remember when you're multiplying with the same basis you're adding the powers so 2 plus 2x two plus you're multiplying these together which gives you 6x plus 3 and that is equal to 6 and then we're going to group our like terms and solve for x so 2x plus 6x gives you 8x equals 6 minus 3 which is 3 we're solving for x so we have 8x is equal to 3 so we're dividing both sides by 8 so x is equal to 3 over 8 Alright, so let's say we have 8 to the 2x is equal to 1 over 64. The lowest base here is 8, and we can change 64 to base 8. So let's say we have 8 to the 2x is equal to 1 over 8 squared. Now we can change this. So this is the same thing as saying. 8 to the minus 2. So we have 8 to the 2x is equal to 8 to the minus 2. So now that the bases are the same, we can equate the power. So we have 2x is equal to minus 2. And we're solving for x, so we're dividing both sides by 2. So x is equal to minus 1. Let's try one more like that. So we have 9 to the 3x is equal to 1 over 2, 43. Now, the lowest base here is 9. However, we cannot write 9 to any power to give us 2, 43. So the lowest base you can think of that is common between both of these is 3. So 3 squared for 9, and then we have 3x on the outside, is equal to 1 over 3 to the 5 for 243. Again, we're multiplying the powers here. So we have 3 to the 6x is equal to 1 over 3 to the 5. And again, remember we can carry up the 3 to the 5 and we have 3 to the minus 5. So it's equal to 3 to the minus 5. So now that the base is the same, we can equate the power. So we have 6x is equal to minus 5. So we're dividing both sides by 6. And we have x is equal to minus 5. So that is the end of the video. And I'll see you guys next time for more math.